suddenly we're in a whole new area with some whole new enemies. Whoop. Man, this game definitely wasn't meant to be seen in glorious 1080p. I'm, I'm just noticing all sorts of little graphical glitches. But hey, I have a new computer and a new graphics card, so damn it, I'm gonna use it. These folks here are the Painting Guardians, for reasons that will become obvious uh, in a bit. Yeah, we're already back to 19,000 souls. Like, you, it is very obvious that you're supposed to do this, uh, or that you're really supposed to just be totally okay with spending and losing souls at this point, because honestly, this is where the amount of souls in the game just just takes off. Anyway, we are presented with a very unique challenge now. And as a player, you might think, holy shit, is the game actually asking me to do this? But that's really what Honor Londo is about. Um, just really difficult challenges that kind of stretch the game's mechanics to their limits. Uh, I really like that they put enemies on here, because on one hand, holy shit game, dick move. But on the other hand, it's sort of this inviter and like this invitation to say, hey, I know you might think that this is really difficult and, you know, just trying to do this with our game's platforming system might be a challenge. Goodbye. <laughs> but I think you can do even better. This this is almost Dark Souls' way of like taunting you. I also kind of like how once again, like we were on that platform way earlier in the game, but this is this is meant to be walked across, but not stood still on. So yeah, this is definitely the game's uh, way of saying, all right, we're not we're not playing easy anymore. Uh, anyway, really nice thing here that is like the most obvious thing to any player. You can cut down this chandelier and be like, okay, I can clearly get this item later. Also, we get a lovely view of a painting. Oddly enough, the one that they're guarding. But, again, we don't quite have a way down there. Can't even see too much down there, but it's there is a promise now that we've broken that chandelier that yes, we will be going down into this room eventually. The game also gives you a really nice view of this statue of a woman with two what look to be black knights by her side. You... you done yet? You, you bored of this? No, I guess not. Uh, you do want to take this slow and steady because as you did see, there's a bit of a knock- Oh, fuck. <laughs> At least I got them too. <laughs> You do want to take this slow and steady, because as you can see, it's very easy to uh, get knocked off. But at the same time, if you're not careful, you... Or if, you, if you're too careful, those knives will just knock you off, and the, the AI pattern will just continue throwing at them until you make the first mistake. So, uh... Good on you, Dark Souls. You got me. Let's try that again, shall we? The gargoyle is, in fact, a despawning enemy. Just, just FYI. These painting guardians can be a little bit dangerous for my giant sword because they, they are some of the dodgier enemies in the game. Uh, but taking them on one at a time isn't usually that dangerous. Honestly, the, the game knows that they're not super difficult enemies, which is why it first presents them to you on giant catwalk. Yeah, walking straight in a video game is one of my weaknesses. Alright. Boop. You can't actually deal with these guys uh, without, you know, walking, waiting for them to go. In fact, you really have to kind of make a move here to get this guy out of his strat here. This is really the safest place to fight any of them. I'm, I'm over here, dude. Just because, like, you know, compared to the rest of the place, there's a lot more room here to maneuver. Honestly, if anything, this this big section really favors my giant sword and giant shield, because I can just stand there and take the hits. They 
They're the ones who really have to make the first move here. You're, you're definitely supposed to uh, exploit these. Oh, wow, I never actually saw that animation where they look like they're about to fall off. That's kind of cute. You're definitely supposed to exploit these things that look like they're just, you know, wall dressing. Um, because you can stand on them just fine, and it gives you just a little bit more space. Alright, gotta be careful. Always careful. A lot of this area, as uh, difficult and perhaps dickish as it is, is predicated on you just being slow and steady. I also like this because it's just evil. Like there's there's very clearly a chest over there, so it's like you can you can get over here, but uh, that'll require more platforming. So good luck. Let's continue. That's uh, an interesting view. the The game definitely does push you along this path here. Um, make sure that you see that statue and kind of take note of it. But the first time you're here, you'll you'll definitely. Uh, be a little bit too worried to kind of pay that too much mind. I'm going to traverse the white light real quick, uh, but actually go back, because as we saw, there is still more stuff to explore here. And another painting guardian. Forgot you were down here. Oh right, poise works in this game too. <laughs> Up two, three, four. God, like I'm, I'm doing a let's play of this game. I'm on a let's play of Dark Souls two with Geop, and I'm playing Dark Souls three myself. At least when I can pull myself away from Overwatch. So, so like, I'm, I'm familiar with the mechanics of all three games in this series, and it is very easy to mix along. Uh, anyway. So that was pretty much a dead end path over there, but there's there's still a chest over there. And if we continue to go on our exploratory kick here, we will notice that there is a floor over that way. And if I can futz around with the camera a bit, actually I think I can just do this. Yeah, let's let's be safe. You know, briefly. We can end up on this platform. And if we time a jump just right. Oh, right. Oh god, I tried to jump Dark Souls 2 style again. But, it didn't cost us. We can fall into the twin of the room that we were over. Oh, hello. Forgot there was one of you guys here. And make our way over to that miracle. Is it a miracle? No, that's a divine blessing, isn't it? Right, I am correct. Have we gotten one of these before? I feel like we have. Yes, we have. Just as a reminder, though, Holy Water from Goddess Guinevere, fully restore HP and undo irregularities. The Goddess of Sunlight Guinevere, daughter of the Great Lord of Sunlight Gwyn, is cherished by all as a symbol of bounty and fertility. Um, I actually am not sure if the crystal thingo we got before... Oh right, we did, see, we did get a gargoyle tail axe as well. Sliced tail of the gargoyle guarding the Bell of Awakening in the Undead Church, or patrolling in Honor Londo. Can be used as a bronze battle axe. Bends dramatically during large attacks, owing to the nature of it as it, owing to its nature as a tail. So yeah, this also points out that it's both in the church and in Honor Londo, giving you that connection of the two. Uh, quite like that. Let's see, crystal halberd. Okay, this is just a regular halberd, but with the crystal enchantment, which is what I thought. Uh, but. Glad we were able to get those. Did I get anything else? Not that I recall. I'm sure I'll be like, oh, I'm an idiot for forgetting that, but whatever. Also, that poor dude just splayed down there. Alright, so, now that we were able to get that thing... Oh god, I have, to do, I have to do a weird jump thing for here. There we go. That's how you jump in Dark Souls 1. Oh, thank god they changed that. Now that we have this, we can actually just use this formerly empty room to get back onto the main path. So let's do that. See what's out here. We do make it up to this strange looking contraption. Um, and in fact, there is 
a wheel thing here that we can turn. Were we so inclined? Um, let me see. There is a staircase over here first. Let's let's give that a look. This is a really interesting set piece, and I like it quite a lot. Uh, but it can be quite an annoyance to. Oh, oh. hello there. It can be quite an annoyance to navigate sometimes, because there's, I can't remember if there's two or three settings to this thing. Might be three. So there was nothing down over there, except a gargoyle who couldn't get to us. But if we give it a twist, we actually get a cutscene that shows us pushing it all this way over here. Right, there are three settings. Whoop. <laughs> it noticed us. And we get a second bell gargoyle. This one is an interesting combat encounter because it really is in just a very strange combat arena compared to the last one we fought. Yeah, wow, we can just slice those things off. It's interesting, I'm not sure if they gave these things more health compared to the, uh, to the Bell Gargoyles. They probably did, but they definitely didn't give their health, their tail more health relative. Because it's, it's pretty obvious that that was meant to be a few swings rather than just the one that we've been doing here. I think this is the biggest open area we got, and we, we really thrive on an open area here, just because it... Ooh, ow. Just a little punch right there. Let's see. I mean, obviously this thing can, like, fly around and do all sorts of weird shit while we're out here, but... If we're, if we're like, inside the building and having it fall over, that just, you know, wakes it even... Oh, damn, I whiffed. That just makes it even, you know, more variables for us to fight. Also, oh, that didn't finish it. Yeah, it'd be pretty embarrassing if this thing killed me. A little close for comfort. And we get the Gargoyle's Halberd and the Gargoyle's Shield. Um, so something that I don't believe was in the original version of this game is that if there's enemies that only have a limited number of spawns in the entire game, like those Gargoyles or a few other types that we'll see, like that was the last one that we beat, they'll always drop their, th their special item. Now that I think about it, I may have said that when the Necromancers... Uh, died and gave me a lamp, but worth worth noting. So there is we we actually get to the uh, floor of the painting from here, and I actually think I'm not gonna go explore this first. Uh, we'll we'll do this area. I don't know at some point. I feel like I had a plan at one point of when I was going to do that, but uh, I have forgotten it entirely. But I don't want to do it right now, because I want to just focus on Otto Londo for now. Basically, it leads to a completely different area. Uh, it's also worth noting that we have now completed this path here. So we can, we can go back to the first bonfire. But what I actually want to do is bring this down even lower. Because like I said, there are three settings that you can put this to. Oddly enough, this will get you back to the painting room on this side, and I guess we just kill the painting guardian somehow. That's neat. But if we go all this way down here, we may just find something interesting. This is really the part of the game where I'm starting to get into, like, weird endgame choices. But I'm, I'm going to go down here briefly just to take a look at some things. We find a bonfire, which is uh, suspiciously close to the last one we found. But hey, I'll take it. Find a corpse with the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. And a giant statue. Along with some tombstones that we're kind of walking over. We don't know much about this statue, but, uh... 
it's not too much of a spoiler for me to say that this is Gwyn. First Lord. Look at that ring we got. Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. Lord Gwyn's Firstborn, who inherited the sunlight, once wore this ancient ring. Boosts the strength of miracles. Lord Gwyn's Firstborn was a god of war, but his foolishness led to a loss of the, of the Annals. Annals? Mm. And a rescinding of his deific status. Today, his name is not even known. So you get the tie-in with the, the... There's a lot of, like question marks surrounding the the firstborn of Gwyn, uh, including whether Solaire is or is not him. I don't care. Just straight up, whatever. Um, and so, you might think that that's all there is to do with this room. I mean, it is quite fancy, and there is a bonfire, so it's... You wouldn't be blamed for thinking such a thing. Uh, but actually, if we take a ring that we got in the catacombs and put it on. At least I think that we got in the catacombs. Dark Moon Seance Ring. And put it on near this statue. It turns out to be an illusion. Uh, this is one of those things that I don't really have any, like, they, there's no way for the player to really know that this is supposed, what you were supposed to do to get this. But, it's also kind of side content. Um, on playing Dark Souls 2 and 3, I've sort of had a lot of back and forth on whether super obtuse secrets are good, like, can be good game design or not. Um, and a lot of the time it kind of comes down to, if it's not really core content, I, I like it, but there, there's also times where stuff like that can be frustrating. I don't know, I this this is sort of something I've been thinking a lot about over the last two months as I've done this and done the let's play of Dark Souls 2 and stuff like that. Anyway Behold, This is the tomb of the great Lord Gwyn. Tarnished it shall not be by the feet of men. If thou art a true disciple of the dark sun, cast aside thine eye. Hear the voice of mine self, Windelin, and kneel before me. We get talked to by a person. We could go through this fog door, but uh, they did just say to not do that. So yeah, let's... sure. O oh, disciple of the dark sun, thou hast journeyed far. Hear my voice, if thou shalt swear by the covenant to become a shadow of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere. A blade that shall hunt the foes of our lords. Then I shall protect thee, safeguarding thy person with the power of the dark moon. And so we found the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant. We've also found Gwendolyn, a deity of Honor Londo, who runs this covenant, perhaps among other things. And I mean, sure, why not? We were a Chaos Servant for a bit. Now we'll not be a Chaos Servant. So we get a Blue Eye Orb and a Blade Covenant Ring. Very well. Now thou art a Blade of the Dark Moon, hunteth the enemies of the Lords by the power of the Dark Sun. So this covenant was sort of meant to be a PvP punishment covenant, where if you kill too many people as a Dark Wraith or just invading people, you're supposed to get invaded by these guys. And it does happen, but as with a lot of the covenants, it can be a bit wonky. Do I have any? No, I didn't think so. So we can't talk with uh, Gwendolyn. Oh well. I'm sure they'll have more to say sometime. For now, let's let them be, though. So yes, and that's why there's a bonfire in this area as well. There is a lot more to that encounter than originally meets the eye. But for now, we'll leave that be and continue upon a uh, more expected path. You're definitely... I, I feel like... 
I like the decision to hide that so obtusely because that really is the sort of thing that you don't want a first-time player to stumble upon. Uh, partly because the game does give you that decision to just go in at a fog door, to just go in through the fog door. And doing that has some repercussions to it. So I do actually kind of like that that's hidden really obtusely. The, the, it's a very subtle use of what could be a very frustrating uh, game design tactic. So I guess that's what I'll say about that for now.